Hmm, g'day, Tragic here, and welcome back to Mage Knight. This is video two. I'm not really counting the turns, but uh, it's day one. Round one, and uh, it's been a pretty, not a particularly great start. We had a very slow map with all these swamps and five movement points coming in here. Uh, we made some pretty questionable decisions. Uh, Etheria went round this way for some reason, which was just like, why? <laughs> she had to go through a swamp. I, my, the idea was that she'd go to the swamp and that would give her a gold and then she could attack in here. But this guy with his four physical resistance and needing eight attack is quite hard at this stage. So that didn't work out. She really should have gone this way up here. But uh, that was a bit of a bummer. But, uh, you know, we have... Uh, doing some things. Uh, Belvoir, he took a lot of damage. A lot of people have commented, I took a lot of damage last turn from him. Four. He healed one in the glade. And uh, I could have actually technically blocked it. It was only required three to block, and I had a uh, two block here. But I wanted to save this for a movement because we can quite comfortably just sit on here for a little bit and just heal that way and retain our cards for a more powerful move later on. And it doesn't matter if we go a little slower because uh, this guy here is worth 10 points, which is gonna get him right into the lead. And basically we can heal and at the same time we can draw the right cards required to pay the four mana cost here, because uh, we've got an absolute shocking die pool. I mean, look at that, all black except for one gold. I mean, that is horrendous. Uh, what else has been going on? Goldex, uh, he is the only person to have cleared a actual dungeon, which is very good. And Wolfhawk has done exactly nothing. Only two people have leveled up in these first two turns. So it's been a pretty dodgy turn. Anyway, let's get back to Goldex. Let's draw five cards and see what is happening. What have we got here? We've got a, we've got a, oh, we've got an Ambush. We've got Crystal Joy. We've got Mana Joy. We've got quite a lot of action here. Ambush can give us quite large attacks and block values. So let's see if there's something he can attack here. Um, to get to here is seven movement, which is a ridiculously high amount of movement, but that does get us in the position to take out this place here, which would be very handy. To get into here is only going to cost us five movement, which would be very, very handy. In addition, there is a village, and there's actually quite a good villager here called the Foresters. This is the kind of unit I like to get during uh, Dungeon Lords, because you can't take units into the dungeons. It's they're, they're, they're not allowed to come into the dungeons with you. So I look for units that have map abilities, and move two and minus one to swamps, that's a big thing. In fact, someone should have bought that card already. So he might just go here and uh, buy that card. Has he got any... He does have improvisation, which is enough to give him exactly what he needs. In fact, this is not a bad... Then he can use Crystal Joy, he can use this. So that's actually a pretty damn good move. The other option is that he just comes straight into here. So that's three, four, five to get into there. And then he has to block five, attack three, or attack six. So I'm just gonna bring this over here just while I have a look-see. Uh, first we need three to actually get in there, and we have move two. Uh, we do have a gold mana, by the way, in the thing, so we can pretty much power anything we want here. So I can go gold. Uh, crystal discard a wound. So that just allows us to discard wounds. So this gives us four 
movement, that uh, four, we need four, we need five, six. So that gives us enough movement to get in. Then we just need to block and attack. So I can do this, but I'd have to discard all my cards, use all my cards, or I'd have to take wounds. It gives us three. Is three enough to level us up is the question. Oh, we've already leveled, haven't we? So that'll just get us to seven. I'm not really sure this is an effective use of our turn. Basically, I can kill this guy, but I'd be chucking away Crystal Joy, which is an extremely good card. Because I've moved in with four. The other option is to just move in like this and go five. That gives us... I need five. I need eight to get to here, don't I? Wow. Yeah, you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to do exactly what I said at the beginning. Let's put this die back. We won't even... Oh, yeah. We'll u yeah, we'll use this die. So I'm going to go I'm not even going to use the die yet. I'm just going to go 1 2 and see what else I draw. Uh, put this back. So I'm just going to go 1 2 into the village. And so now I've moved into the village. I don't really want to discard any of these three cards, but what I will do, let me just have a quick look at what cards I've used. I have not used any of my influence cards at all. God, look at those wounds. I haven't used any of my influence cards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go Crystal Joy, power it with a gold mana, So I'm paying a gold, and basically, even though I'm paying the gold, I'm actually activating the top of the card. So to use the bottom of this card, you actually have to spend two mana, blue and whatever thing, because it's pay a mana. But I'm taking a green crystal. Ooh, what is this? This allows me... During the movement, reveal a new tile at a distance of up to three spaces. This costs no movement. Yeah, okay, so I'm just doing that. Long story short, I'm gaining a crystal and passing my turn. <laughs> okay, it is now Athera's turn. Uh, okay, what has she got? Let's draw a five. Okay, so she's got a... She's actually got a good hand here. I can't believe she can't take over that. Oh, we need... This guy has... We need eight to kill him because of... Oh, actually, what does this do? Fire attack three. And he has ice resistance. Okay, this is interesting. Uh, it's actually kind of complicated when you have multiple attack types. So the way it works is if we look at the uh, resistance table over here, if the mage knight attacks with X, the enemy resists with Y. So if we attack with fire and they have ice resistance, the damage is one to one. That means every point of damage counts. It's not halved or anything, right? So if I attack with three fire attack, that means there's one armor that has not been nullified, which means I need to do another two attack. So if I power it with the green like this, I'm actually going to be doing fire attack five, which is enough to kill him. So I can kill this guy. All I need to do is block four now, which I can do by powering this guy. So that's block five. And the reason I need to block uh, four is because he's got ice attack, which means you double, you know, I've got to block four, even though I only take two. And I have to do it because it's paralyzed. And then I need three to move in there, which I can produce with this guy and this guy. Bam. Beautiful. So that is three to move in. This guy attacks 
If we're two ice, we block with five, and I'll take the blue crystal from my inventory to pay for that. And then we attack back. I'm going to use the green from the source to power up fire attack five, which is enough to kill this bloke. So, boom, nicely done. And that's a five, so a nice level up. Yonk. Oh, beautiful. Okay, let's see what you get. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Ah, oh, well, we're definitely taking... Oh, two, my two favorite uh, skills come out at once. Unfortunately, there's really no reason to ever not take polarization that I can tell. That is one of the best skills in the game, in my opinion. I love it. Basically, it turns the six mana types into three mana types because every mana type can be the opposite. So if you have a red, you've actually got a blue. It's a very, very, very good skill. <laughs> okay. And look at these. Take a wound, take a wound, take a wound. These are all my favorite cards for her. Basically, when I play her, I like playing a blood mage. I take tons of wounds, and then I discard wounds using skills like this one, which is discard a wound for two attack or two whatever. I think we can't pass our blood range. Attack nine is pretty powerful. So we're going to take that one. Uh, before, beforehand, we also are going to... Firstly, you get the reward for beating the object. And we're going to take a, a spell. Because like when you beat a, a, a monster, you get a spell. Now, Energy Flow is a competitive skill. It looks like Tough Luck has marked those cards. I'm using Tough Luck scans, these really nice scans. And these are ready unit spells. These are all about units. And the problem is we're not really using units in Dungeon Lords, or I don't use units very often. So who cares? So we have two of the best movement spells in the game. We've got Misform, which basically allows you to move across any terrain type. Uh, it can't enter hills and mountains. And it produces, uh, and everything costs two to get through. But this one is even better. When you play this, spend one to five move points and move one revealed space on the map for each. You must end in a space, safe space, and there is no restrictions on the terrain. It's just a fantastic card. So I am taking this card. This was the first... Sp I, <laughs> I've got a soft spot for this card. This was the first spell I ever gained. I can still remember the first time I played Mage Knight and I first Mage Tower I took over. This was the card I got. And get, having that ability that my other players didn't have really made the game awesome to me. I, I just That's when I fell in love with it, was this card. So, yonk, let's take that. And then at the end of the round, we level up. So that's where that goes. The order that you place them on top of your deck doesn't really matter because we've got a completely empty hand. But if you've only got, can draw one card, it does matter. Okay, so that's a very good turn for her. Now we have a Wolf Hawk. Let's draw up to five. And what the hell are you going to do? Um, hmm. I guess he, he can come into here. You need three to get in there. We should be able to do this. So here's five block. There's three to get in. And then we need three attack. We don't have any attack. It'd be really nice to have some attack. Seems like such a waste, doesn't it? Look at that, all black. Can you believe that? That is the worst rolling I've ever seen. Every single die in the source is a black. Unbelievable. I, I can't believe the luck. Okay, let's have a look here. Uh, what are we doing? Do I want to kill this guy? Oh, God, I'm pressing the wrong buttons on the keyboard. 
<sighs> I only need three to kill him. So basically, if I... Oh, I've, I don't have any way to power this. I don't have a blue. Actually, this can give me a blue, but then I can't kill him. Because I've got no attack values. What other options do I have? I can go to here and explore. Or I can get to here. Let's try and get into there. What do I need to get to there? I need 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 to get to that location. Gee, what terrible, terrible. Uh, Wolfhawk is just doing terrible right now, isn't she? So this thing here gives me four movement. In each other card that produces movement gives plus one, including sideways. So that'd be four, five, six. What do I need? I need five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I need ten. Four, five, six. I need blue to power it. I'm just going to power it like this. So that is four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That gets me over here. Three. Eight, nine, ten. Man, she's been running around without any kind of. Don't roll a black. What is going on? There we are. Didn't roll a black. <laughs> Finally. Meanwhile, over here, we have our gold mana. We have regenerate. So we're going to power regenerate, but we're going to power it with the gold mana here. So pay a gold mana of any color and throw away a wound. So let's throw away one wound. And it says, if you use a green mana to do this, oh wait, did I draw a card? I draw to six. I've already drawn to six, yeah. Uh, if you pay with a green mana, or you have the least fame, not tied, also draw a card. So we're gonna use that gold mana as a green mana And we throw away a rune and draw a card. Then we get Decompose, which is a really cool card. So I'm going to use Decompose. When you play this card, throw away an action card from your hand. Gain two crystals to your inventory, the same color as the thrown away card. You know what? I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for my next turn. And that will allow me to regenerate out of here. So... Uh, actually, look at this. Even better, we have a green mana up here in the source. So I'm going to use the green mana to pay for regenerate. And then I'm going to use the gold mana from the, uh, you know, the, the glade to pay for decompose. When you play this card, throw away an action card from your hand, gain a crystal to your inventory of each basic color that does not match that color. So we're going to throw away Threaten, and throw away actually means remove from the game. So this is actually gone. And we're going to get a blue, a green, and a white. And that is that. And then we're finishing our turn on a glade, so we get to heal again. And now you can see why I just was not worried about receiving all those wounds and we've retained our our movement and block okay that's the end of that next turn uh starting with gold x again let's draw up to five and the influence Perfect. I knew the influence was coming. We're going to buy this card here. This one costs five. His reputation is at zero, so that's fine. So we're just going to go four, five. Oh, let's check the source, though. 
and oh, the sauce is just a absolute pain in my tuchus. Hey, what did I do wrong here? I was supposed to discard this guy. Yeah, I, I played that wrong last turn. Remember I went to all that effort to explain Crystal Joy, but it allows you to discard another card to keep it in your hand. And I looked at my deck and I thought, ah, I've got extra influence. I've got to be coming soon so I can get rid of improvisation. So whatever. The point is I forgot to actually do it. So Crystal Joy is in my hand, which is actually perfect. So we're going to flip this over. We gain a blue crystal and we gain a red token. And I'm going to use red like so. That gives us five influence, five, six, seven influence, which is enough to buy this guy. We also get minus one reputation. So that sends him back one. And then I'm going to do crystal joy again, and I'm going to use this white die. And this time I'm going to let it be discarded. And that gives us a white crystal. Okay, and now it's her turn. Let's draw a five card. Your blammo. Unfortunately, we have another black. Wow, that is that is seriously unusual rolling. Oh, what is going on with those blacks? Okay. So I'm going to do this and draw a card. Get a move two. I've got no more cards left in my deck. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use mana pool and I'm going to use a black die because I have polarization, which means black is actually gold. So that is all gold, <laughs> which is pretty awesome. And this allows us to take, because I'm paying for it as a white, take two mana dice from the source and set them to any color except gold, gain a mana token for each of those colors. Now it does say set them to any color. That includes black, which means with polarization, if I hadn't already used it, you can only use the skill once per turn. I can use this card to create gold mana. It's pretty, pretty crazy. And I can also use this card to deplete the mana source by making things black. This is such a good card. Anyway, whatever. The point is, we're going to make two whites. So I'm going to get two white like that. I'm going to spend boom and do wind. I'm going to spend two. And that gives us two movement right but because we've got wind we can actually i could i could move to here if i wanted i can move so many places except you know what oh my phone's ringing yeah you know what i think i'm actually going to do is i'm going to what i'm actually going to do is take out this guy here So he's attacking for four. We can't really kill him. Uh, <laughs> all black. So we're going to let this guy attack and we're going to go block with four, four block. And then we only need three to kill him. I'm just going to go bang and take a wound and that's going to produce five attack which kills him that gives us three one two three which does level us up nice and i didn't fix the mana for the other players what a meanie. What a meanie. Okay, level three, your blammo. Fortunately, it's just horrendous, horrendous uh, mana pool here. 
Um, so this is actually not a bad hand, but because there's no mana, there's not even a white, there's absolutely nothing she can do. Let's pull one, draw one card. Really not a lot to do. So I'm just going to discard the, the walk and pass the turn. Meanwhile, over here, he starts with a gold. If only this was a red and not a green. Oh well, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to go one, two, three. I'm going to use... Oh, actually, you know what I'm going to do there? Let's do it this way. So, no, I can't spend the gold because I need the gold for red. Yeah, so I'm going to go one, two, three. That gives us two movement, plus this for one movement. That gives me three to get into here. And then I'm going to spend red, green, blue, white. And that, of course, is enough to beat this which gives him plus 10, takes him to 15. Bam! Which actually levels him up. Okay, so shapeshift is a good one. It basically means attack can be block and a block can be tack or whatever. It doesn't matter what it is. It gives you lots of options. And Secret Ways is also very good, but I think I'm going to go with the uh, uh, shape-shifting. So basically, what it says is, one basic action card that gives a fixed amount of move, attack, or block, instead of gives the same amount of one of the other two types. Elemental types are preserved. So basic just means your original deck, so it doesn't work on any advanced actions. And over here we have Dodge and Weave, which I think I'm going to take. Boom. Booyah. Okay, so we're just going to do a little amendment here. Uh, I was so disappointed at the, <laughs> at the black mana source here that uh, I just discarded the stamina, the idea is hopefully there's going to be mana eventually so we can use mana draw and actually destroy that dungeon that Wolf Hawk is sitting on. But it just seems such a waste. So since I discarded a movement, I may as well uh, see what the next object is. Bam. That gives us a, one of these. And it also places another. That's a particularly great round. Now, this guy's deck is out of cards. So he's going to declare end of round this turn. So there's only a couple more turns left. I think uh, I might just finish it off in the next video though. And that's that. I'll see you guys next time.